Hello again, everyone. Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about celebrity astrology. Well, anyway, the first thing I want to talk about, I think what's really interesting, and I've talked about this in other videos, that it seems like a lot of actors and actresses, what they do is that they seem to connect with roles that correspond with their astrological natures. I do strongly believe that, at least on a subconscious level, that the, the actors and actresses, many of them, they they find roles that do fit their astrological uh, nature and characteristics. Now, I think one example is actor Mark Harmon, who has the lead role on NCIS, and he has Scorpio rising, and Mark Harmon on the show, I mean, he plays a very kind of tough, hard-nosed personality, no-nonsense, very incisive, really doesn't take much off anybody. He could be very abrupt, and he shows on, on the show a lot of willpower, and, and really, I think a lot of this can be connected with the fact that he has Scorpio rising, and... What, show, what is shown on that show is a lot more of his Scorpio rising as opposed to his son in Virgo. And I think another good example, another uh, celebrity, another actor that really seems to find roles that, are, that seem to be compatible with his astrological nature is Cl actor Clint Eastwood, who also has Scorpio rising. And I mean, many of you may know the Dirty Harry movies. He's very imposing on, in these uh, in these movies. He plays somebody that is very hard nosed. Won't really like it, like the Mark Harmon role. Uh, Clint Eastwood plays a very tough character. Somebody that really uh, pretty much gets down to business and is someone that is not really uh, doesn't really show a lot of, I guess you could say, animation, or is not very whimsical, really just they can be very stern and really and very intense, and really that, that a lot of times is the Scorpio, and I think that it's projected strongly in his movies now in real life. Clint Eastwood has his son in Gemini, but I don't think we really see that come out that much uh, in the movies. Now, the Gemini Sun could show the versatility and adaptability to different roles, but really, I think that that would it's pretty much uh, it. And Clint Eastwood also has his Moon in Leo, and Mark Harmon has the MC in Leo, Midheaven Leo, and so does Clint Eastwood. A lot of actors and actresses seem to have Leo prominent in their charts. Now, you look at Tom Cruise, has a Leo moon. There is a chart on him, but I would say speculative. It's not exactly what you call an A rating. Tom Cruise, and on one, at least one website, has his rising sign at Scorpio, and that would put the, the MC in Midheaven at, at Leo. But his Leo moon, I believe he'd have a Leo moon regardless of that. But you also look at a lot of celebrity, as far as uh, actors and actresses especially, a lot of them have a preponderance of planets on the top half of the chart. This shows that need more for a public life rather than a private one. Sometimes, though, you will see actors and actresses have a lot of majority of their planets on the bottom half of the chart, which of course would be houses one through six. But those actors and actresses, they still find a way to have a somewhat of a public life, but they do like their privacy, probably more so, uh, more enamored with their private life as opposed to the ones that have most of the, the planets on the top half of the chart. Now, another thing too, as far as uh, astrology and uh, celebrities go, uh, let's uh, talk about was interesting. There was the death of one, uh, Whitney Houston, who was a singer and actress, and she died tragically in 2012. And they felt, but based on the, the report, that there were some drugs that may have been connected with her death. Well, firstly, that many of you may know Whitney Houston had Pisces rising, and that sign, of course, is associated 
uh, with drugs and sadly this is a sign that Pisces is the sign that could have the greatest propensity toward that she also had transiting Neptune and Chiron in Pisces in it in the 12th house of endings a uh, house of endings in a horoscope and Neptune though by in Chiron by transit may not have been conjunct the ascendant but they were still not in, in really fairly close proximity Chiron was around four degrees from her ascendant at the time and she also had and, and of course Neptune is in Pisces and Neptune is associated with drugs as well and Chiron could indicate wounds and it wasn't far from her first house cusp of the physical body Whitney Houston also had Uranus in the sixth house so it could indicate some unusual health issues as well now another uh, thing as far as uh, celebrities in astrology it's interesting to, to look at some of these celebrities and, and look at their their Sun and their moon and ascendant and how that interacts and played a role in perhaps who they became you look at uh, the I believe I believe the late uh, evil Knievel had his uh, Sun in Libra moon in Leo and an Aquarius ascendant well the Sun and Libra can represent our basic wants that could be maybe that need for balance and moon and Leo them are the moon is the emotional needs and for perhaps for evil Knievel that was about getting attention and being the showman maybe doing something where where that was attention seeking and something he could possibly get notoriety in from in recognition well with Aquarius ascendant perhaps the way he, he went about that then was through something unorthodox and eclectic being a stuntsman on an unusual profession so I think that's maybe how all those three uh, proponents interacted with evil Knievel and what played a role in him being so so prominent in, in, in basically in what he did in his life so I just felt that's interesting as far as to look at as far as celebrities go and another thing about celebrities uh, too is that oh, I think as I stated before a lot of them seem to have a lot of their planets above the horizon and houses 7 through 12 and also Leo energy can play a, a strong role as well and you look at Donald Trump who has a Leo ascendant in really um, the full culmination of the sign for that matter 29 degrees Leo there's gonna be some kind of a eclipse solar eclipse I believe in around like August 21st and it's gonna be very close to his uh, August 21st 2017 it's gonna be very close proximity to his ascendant and Mars so I'm wondering if there's gonna be some issue flare that might flare up with his physical body it'd be very interesting to see what happens but anyway Donald Trump of course is I mean he's the prototypical Leo ascendant personality he's very flamboyant very charismatic magnetic he seems to command attention uh, wherever he goes and very dramatic even whatever he it seems like many things he says are just very very dramatized uh, to say the least so that's one thing uh, to look at as far as uh, celebrities go Leo can be very prominent and also not just the preponderance of, ener of energy and planets above the horizon but it seems like the 10th house and 11th house are often very strong more specifically as far as celebrities uh, go so if I'm not mistaken actor Tom Hanks has a pretty strong 10th and 11th house in his chart so those are some things to look at as far as celebrities and uh, astrology go and another uh, thing too is uh, when you look at um, celebrities and astrology another thing I guess I could touch up on would be uh, let's say a sports athlete and you look at uh, the case of Aaron Rodgers and many of you may have heard of him he's a prolific NFL uh, at athlete of NFL uh, he's a professional football player and it's funny that many of you that follow and the NFL may remember some time ago he had made his little semi proclamation about uh, that he thought that the Packers can run the table and went out and sure enough they won their last six regular games of the regular season and 
They also went on to win two more games in the postseason, only to fall in the NFC title game. What I want to get at, though, as far as Aaron Rodgers goes, is that he has his son in Sagittarius and his ascendant in Taurus. Well, son in Sagittarius can sometimes be prophetic and, and visionary, and and they could be very bold with their statements. But a lot of times they may be they, they they're not off the mark in a lot of their statements, though as audacious as they may be. Now he has a Taurus ascendant. Now I don't know if many uh, any of you read the book uh, Secrets from a Stargazer's Notebook. I believe it was written by Debbie Kempton Smith and she said something something like that these gents come through on their promises meaning the Taurus rising people do in the Taurus rising description. Well Aaron Rodgers having Taurus rising he made sure he came through, I guess, on the bold uh, Sagittarius prediction that he made in the prophetic statement is what it turned out to be. So I think that's very uh, interesting as well. And another thing, too, is that I've noticed that when, when you look at sports and, and astrology, it seems like Libra seems to be really one of the better athletes on average maybe it's because they're so enamored with the team concept and they're so good as far as that goes and they you look at tom, uh, quarterback tom brady of the nfl plays for the patriots he has a libra ascendant and he's really st so strongly about the team yes he puts up very prodigious numbers he's a very talented athlete he knows i mean whether he acknowledges it or not he knows he's one of the best quarterbacks so there I believe he, he realizes that and is cognizant of it but he's always very complimentary to his teammates he he is a, a really what you call a true uh, quintessential team player you'll see uh, Mike Schmidt used to play uh, for Major League Baseball was a very great player he had his son sign he has his son sign in Libra Dave Winfield was another former Major League Baseball player son sign in Libra as well Libra just seems to be that that sign that can really bring about good athletes for that reason they're not always the most athletic athletes but they are so strongly connected with the team uh, concept so Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for Celebrity Astrology. And stay tuned next time where I'll be continuing my series on the zodiac signs and money. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.